This is a Regain Wellness Podcast with Jamie Logie, episode 124, Is Red Wine Healthy? Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Jamie Logie, I run RegainWellness.com. And this is a Regain Wellness Podcast of the same name, so thanks for coming on out today. If you're new here, extra special welcome. Um, while you're checking things out, I've got a ton of podcasts previous to this one covering every nutrition topic, health, fitness issue you can think of. I've got a lot of great interviews with um, you know, some New York Times bestselling authors, some Food bloggers, contestants from shows like Top Chef, Master Chef. Um, yeah, I got everything. So make sure you subscribe wherever you get podcasts, primarily iTunes, I imagine, but anywhere else you like to get your podcast machine from, and I should be there. And today we're talking about red wine and specific, like, you know, the issues with alcohol in general, but specifically red wine and how it's been associated with a lot of potential health effects, but is that true? And what actually makes red wine different compared to say tequila or a gin or, and red wine specifically to compared to a white wine. So, um, I'll give you the full 411 on all things wine right here. So let's get right into it. Okay. When we talk about red wine and how it's, you know, potentially has health benefits, what we're really talking about is a compound in the red wine called resveratrol. And it's part of the antioxidant family. Like when, when people talk about antioxidants, there's different kind of, not compounds of them, but sort of uh, categories, if you will, like phytonutrients. Um, you know, vitamin E is an antioxidant. There's just different categories of them. And resveratrol is the one in red wine. It's also, you might've seen it sold as its own supplement in stores or nutrition shops. Um, you might have seen it mentioned in various programs, articles, newspapers, all sorts of stuff, um, this resveratrol specifically. <clears throat> so we kind of need to look at that when we're looking at red wine to kind of put them all together. So like I said, primarily it, it's found in resveratrol is found in other sources, but it's a compound found primarily in red wine. Um, and like I said, the virtues of red wine have been, I mean, millennia we've <clears throat> had it preached about for um, the benefits, it, you know, it just its inclusion in um, you know, Christian history, um, what it represents. Uh, it, it's wine is one of the the beverages that really shaped um, mankind. There's a there's an amazing book called The History of the World and six I think six beverages, and it looks at six different drinks and how important they were to shaping. <clears throat> sort of civilization and the progression of mankind and it looks at things like red wine would be one of them as far as its production and the the centers like with the um the romans and their focus on red wine and then bringing it to the greeks and how that shaped a lot of the society and like i said the christian history um <clears throat> sorry the book also focuses on beer which is a really big thing and actually might have had more to act to shape society structure as we know it compared to other drinks um specifically there's the idea that we have we only have bread because we because of beer and bread was kind of a leftover product from beer production the leftover grains and the malted mashes and stuff and it would sit around in the sun and bake and turn into bread but the idea that um people would start to congregate around these areas that had the better grain or beer production and they would set up kind of smaller town centers or, or villages because they want, you know, to have better access to this. Like ancient beer is really a kind of like a oatmeal -y type drink that was uh, more, high, more highly nutritious, but could also probably get you wrecked at the same time. Um, and just kind of the idea of like a class structure with more people or with people having more, you know, reserves of grain to make beer and whatever, and they would be seen more as the elite. And it's just interesting. And the other drinks it looks at that were, important um tea being a very big one with um um 
you know, tea being just at the root of, you know, the Boston Tea Party and connections with the English and India and how the plantations were made there. And then coffee is a big one, too, with how that shaped a lot of our society. Rum was another big one um, as far as like with the island areas and the production growth and development and even up to Coke, which is can't deny how much that shaped the entire world um, for good and for bad and all the all the things in between. So when we look at red wine and the starting off kind of with the health benefits of it, there's been the idea of something that's called the French paradox, which you may or may not be familiar with. And that is that France had a very high rate of saturated fat intake, but they show very low coronary heart disease or deaths associated with coronary heart disease or suffering from it. And they have the idea that it can be attributed to the red wine consumption because the French drink a lot of red wine, a lot of wine in general, but countries I'm, I preferably like, I prefer red wine um, for the health reasons I'll get into too. But just as, as far as the, you know, the structure and the flavors and the experience, I think it's, head and shoulders above red wine. I think it's the, or sorry, white wine. I think the Italians say the only time to drink white wine is when there's no red wine left. And the French are known for quite a lot of red wine drinking. Um, you know, like Bordeaux and that's, um, you know, or they call like a claret. That's probably one of their best known wines and it's, um, combinations of different red wines and, you know, from that region. Um, and it's just a big part of what makes up their diet and kind of their day-to-day life. So that's always been an interesting dynamic, that low heart disease rate. And, you know, they're looking at the red wine consumption. And more recently now, we're looking into the benefits of the antioxidants. Like I mentioned, like resveratrol being in there and that antioxidant compounds. And that's what's made red wine be seen as a bit of a almost a health drink, if you want to think of it that way. People get that, you know, a half glass or a glass a day to get that antioxidant um, intake up. And that's the thing with red wine is you're not going to find um, the antioxidant content in white wine because the antioxidants, those compounds and those polyphenols and all that stuff are found in the seeds and the skins of the red grapes that make up the red wine. So that's the difference there. That's why they're more concentrated. Um, So let's look at what was it that was in red wine, you know, specifically how, what was the research saying that the studies were showing help combat this heart disease, protect the cells against the damage caused by aging. Um, That's what antioxidants do. They they fight off the free radical damages that promotes disease aging. Um, And, you know, like I mentioned, along with the, the polyphenols, which is one of the compounds in, in the grapes and the seeds and the skins, it's the resveratrol that looks like it's providing the health benefits. And that's why the red wine is, I mean, it's tough to call it a health drink. Alcohol has its issues, definitely. Um, but that's what we're looking at here. So when we're looking at resveratrol, we start off with, you know, our body has natural ways of coping with stress. When it's not overwhelmed, it has the ability to manage and cope on its own. It's got this built-in structure that can maintain and manage it. So the problem is we throw way too many scenarios at it that makes it hard to overcome through, you know, just our day-to-day life stress, physical stress, mental, um, you know, fighting traffic every day, having to pay bills, uh, exposure to pollutants and toxins in the environment, all that stuff just overwhelms the body. So... Resveratrol, which I said is found in the skins and the seeds of the dark grapes, is able to activate a body response that is usually used to relieve stress. So this is beneficial to most people as it is, but the resveratrol also on top of that helps the body, like I said, reduce the risk of heart disease, promotes that longer lifespan. It's that antioxidant effect. Um, and helping in the fight of some cancer. So these effects actually were studied by the Scripps Research Institute. And I'll link up some of these, all these studies or whatever I'm ref- referencing on the show notes, which is the all the links and stuff I talk about here today. So you find that if you go to my website, so regainwellness.com, then slash 124. And this will have, you know, anything if you want to just look a little deeper into it. It's kind of the uh, kind of the after party after the show, but not as 
That is crazy. Um, so the the effects that were studied by Scripps Research Institute, uh, they did observe the same findings in that resveratrol in red wine was able to create protective effects that aid in lifespan and overall health. And a little more detail on the why red wine, like we now know that these compounds are found in the, found in the seeds and the skins of the dark red grapes. Um, so the question is, why can't you just eat the grapes or drink grape juice? Why, like, why can't you take those, whether it's um, a Cabernet Franc or a Cabernet Sauvignon grape or whatever it is? Like, why can't you just eat those straight up and get the same effects? Well, that's what's interesting when we get into fermentation and it's really an amazing thing that's benefit mankind is fermentation. It's, it's fascinating, especially when we look at the whole issue of probiotics <clears throat> and gut health, which I don't want to get into that's full other episodes and shows, but when you ferment something, that natural fermentation process creates these compounds that really provide us a lot of benefits. Like say in the case of kombucha, where you take, um, you know, like a tea, like a, a green tea or, or whatever. And then the combinations of adding in different sugars and yeast and the, f- the fermentation process creates all these great probiotics. Same thing with kefir. You take, um, it's like, you know, a fermented dairy product. You take sort of like a, a milk compound, you add in what they call kefir grains, which are like a bacteria they interact with the sugars and that creates you know sort of a carbon dioxide effect but again all these amazing probiotics same thing with um apple cider vinegar it's just it's amazing what this does and what its benefit um has been to people On on the flip side of the fermentation alcohol process has got us in enough problems as it is too so with the during the fermentation process because the um skins of the grapes are left on for a long time that gets that deeper antioxidant resveratrol concentration in the um the the red wine and it's in like it's interesting um white wine actually can be made of dark grapes sometimes like uh trying to think of an example off the top of my head like maybe a chenin blanc i think is a darker grape but because the skins aren't involved for too long it's it leaves a lighter color so the longer those skins are in contact or the longer they ferment in that process the darker the wine and that's what gives it a little more of um that that bold you know like that full mouth flavor when they talk about dryness and boldness that's because it's been in left longer contact so it's that really dark color you know ruby dark color and that process is what is giving the red wine, all these health benefits is that long contact. Um, so these skins plus the long time spent fermenting is what leads to really high polyphenol content, resveratrol content, and that just doesn't occur from eating the whole grapes. Side note, I, I live in southwestern Ontario and we have the Niagara wine region, which is really awesome. If you live anywhere around even like upstate New York or whatever, it's worth coming in. It's on the same parallel as Bordeaux, France. So it can get, you know, really warm and hot summers and is in kind of that right position on the earth to really benefit growth, especially red wine growth. And Niagara has some of the highest polyphenol content grapes of anywhere in the world. So if you buy, if you live in, I mean, you can get them anywhere, but if you live in Ontario or whatnot and you see brands like Jackson Triggs, um, trying to think of some of the other big ones, they, they're going to have a higher antioxidant <clears throat> content, com- content compared to say red wine from like California or like Napa Valley or Sonoma or something like that. So, um, and that, that's all things. So like I said, you can't, you know, you get some benefits eating whole grapes, but like, it's just not the same like grape juice itself too. It also doesn't spend time fermenting or in contact with the skins, Um, so just not the same effect there. So regarding resveratrol and supplement, there is the concern that it's not absorbed by the body very well, if at all. Um, so that's something to look out for. And that's really where alcohol is is such a unique thing. I mean, as much as it makes us take our pants off and dance on bars, it, it really can help us in overall health and wellness. So 
it's just like a fruit juice left in its pure form. Again, it's going to provide some nutrients. There's going to be some vitamins and whatever, some minerals. But fermenting something into alcohol just creates compounds that not only, like I said, make you send drunk texts at 3 a.m., but provide um, benefits like, uh, like you know, we mentioned already about you know the coronary heart disease and whatever. But it can raise the HDL in your body. That's a good cholesterol. It can reduce the formation of blood clots. It helps prevent artery damage. Um, it produces changes in blood pressure. It really does some amazing things, again, in moderation. Um, these effects are really, a, a, you know, when you have a glass or two of red wine, that's okay. When you have a bottle, the uh, counteract of that is not going to work out as well. So the moderation really does need to be addressed. So... Through all the research on the benefits of red wine, um, again, this that moderation idea, utmost importance. It always comes up in all these studies and all these references, moderation. So, um, you know, in my opinion, and I'd say the American Heart Association would suggest you just don't start taking up drinking as a way to prevent heart disease. There's still a lot of other good ways to do it through your exercise and um your clean diet. But if you are, you know, if you've been like, if you've never liked alcohol or didn't want to drink, don't worry about it. You know, you can still get all these compounds again from other good food sources, like, um, dark, really dark green leafy vegetables, dark chocolate, um, you know, nuts and seeds. Like you can still get this, but if you're someone who, you know, doesn't mind alcohol and you have drinks now and then you're better off switching to red wine to make it a little more, uh, uh, benefit to your body. So yeah, there's, I mean, I, I've done shows on, I'll link up, I have an episode all about alcohol and how it works in your body and the issues with hangovers. And we all know what can happen, you know, too much. And you end up doing karaoke singing, living on a prayer one night. Um, so moderately is what is recommended. And what that means is, is one drink a day. And that is defined in the case of a wine as a five ounce serving that's considered one drink. So this way you will be avoiding the harmful effects of the alcohol, but getting a serving size that will provide some health benefits. And remember alcohol is a calorie source too. If you're looking to keep weight down, we forget, we always think of the macronutrients as protein, fat, and carbohydrates, but alcohol is a um, calorie source as well. So with the case of fat, it's very, um, calorically dense at nine calories per gram, uh, protein and carbs are four calories per gram. Alcohol is seven. So, you know, watch out that like you can be taking quite a lot of calories on a night of hitting it hard at the bar, no matter what you're drinking. Um, so what are some of your best choices? Like I mentioned about the dark red wines and, you know, what you, you know, like what you want to be looking for and some of the places you can find those. So the top choices for red wines, again, are those full bodied, like I talked about, you know, they, they call them like high tannin wines. It's really got that, like when they say high tannins, like makes your mouth sort of pucker, like your cheeks, you can feel it in your cheeks. That's, that's high tannin and tannin is an antioxidant. And again, also comes from the seeds and the skins of the grapes. And it's just kind of fits in that whole category. Um, so in the case of drinking, it gives it that full body mouthfeel, um, or if you want to call it dry or whatnot. So grapes grown in cooler climates, um, again, like I said, in the Niagara region can have higher resveratrol levels. So other good regions would be, um, you know, again, in like France, cause it gets a bit cooler, um, depending on the time of year, even in some, you know, Chilean or Argentina, South American wines, because they have cooler climates, they can be good areas to pick from. So variety wise, um, things like Malbecs, you can get from lots of places like Spain's a, a good example. Um, Madeiran wines, that's of Southwest France. Pinot Noir is a really good one. It's one of the easiest grown grapes. It's very robust. It can handle a lot of situations, cold, heat, whatever. Um, and it's grown in pretty much every country and region. So Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir, <laughs> if anyone watched Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and remember Titus's Pinot Noir song, um, I should link that in here somewhere. 
Um, so again, like, and every country pretty much makes that. And Petite Syrah is another good variety of that super dark, high tannin, antioxidant um, selection. So as I mentioned, I'll, I'll wrap it up here. As I mentioned before, you don't want to jump into red wine drinking if you've never have. I mean, you know, try it out. See if you like it a little bit, but you don't have to just take on this whole life of alcohol if that's just something that hasn't fit in with your lifestyle. So the first thing you want to do even before you get into that is, you know, make sure your diet's based around real whole foods, primarily fresh organic vegetables, like, you know, double digit servings of non-starchy vegetables each day, citrus fruits, then go for the berries that have that antioxidant compound, like uh, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. They're all amazing. Um, you know, your healthy fats, your nuts and seeds. And that's, um, you know, after these things are established along with, you know, getting good activity, exercise, then you can look into further benefits through something like red wine. So if you find yourself consuming too much alcohol from beer or spirits, like if you see like a lot of gin or tequila or whatever, this could be a good time to start reducing your intake of those things and replace them with, red wine. I mean, I love like a good craft beer. Um, I love, I, I've worked in so many bars and pubs and I love what goes into true, like, I mean, something like a Coors Light or a Budweiser, that's just crap. That's, I mean, that's like the Coca-Cola of beers, but real craft brew beard or cast condition ales. Like I lived in England. I, I, I just love like ales and stouts and porters and all that stuff. And there's such a history and care and love that goes into them. Um, and you, you can enjoy them. You don't chug them like it's a natty, natty ice light or whatever. They are just um, something you, 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 something you just take your time with. You're probably not as likely going to overconsume. but that's the problem with like your regular beers is they're basically it's, you're drinking liquid bread at that point with so many fillers and additives and, and crap like that. Like that when I'm, when I say when you're drinking like a big brand commercial, version. So this would be a good time to, you know, maybe transition a bit into red wines. Um, and if I didn't say it enough, remember without moderate consumption, the benefits is of resveratrol, um, and the red wine pretty much become void. And I think that's where I'll leave it. Um, there, I think that's a lot of good information to kind of get you on the right path or just get you up to speed with what the, um, issues and benefits and everything surrounding red wine are so thank you for listening like i said make sure you subscribe on itunes or stitcher radio or google play music wherever you like podcasts and if you haven't make sure to head over to regainwellness.com slash one two four to see the show notes and while you're there you can sign up for the email newsletter. So I send out an email every couple of weeks just covering, you know, information like this, but things that I primarily share over email. And when you sign up, there's a free ebook, Head in Your Sweet, Sweet Way, which is, I call the healthy eating kind of starter kit. It's got good information on foods you want to be including, uh, foods you want to be avoiding. It's got some recipes. Yeah, the whole shebang. So you can sign up for that at regainwellness.com slash guide. And then it magically gets sent to you by the power of the interweb. So, okay, that's it for me. Thanks for listening. See you soon.
Hey, so you're still listening. So this is kind of a hidden track, if you will. Do you remember when CDs had hidden tracks on it um, that it would just kind of play past the last track listing and open it up? That's, yeah, kind of what this is. So if you've made it this far and heard this, this is a hidden track that um, I'm doing if you are looking at doing like online health and nutrition coaching with me. If you heard this, this will get you an extra free month. So if that's something that interests you, you want to, you know, just have someone, you know, keep help keep you accountable, help you focus on your diet, help you, you know, understand the things you should be eating, the things you avoid is that you should avoid all that stuff. You can send me a message that you heard this and you were interested in getting started at regainwellness.com slash coaching. So there's a little thing you can fill out there and that sends all your info and then we can be in touch and see what might work best for you. Okay. Thanks for listening.